Hello, I'm Dr. Soren Maloney, and I'm a freelance consultant engineer. I'm here with Dr. Yogi Goswami. He's a distinguished university professor and co-director of the Clean Energy Research Center at the University of South Florida. So, Professor, I'd like to welcome you for, and thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure for me to be here. What exactly is thermal energy storage? Thermal energy storage is a technology that can give us energy storage in a cost-effective way. And in this technology, you are heating up materials to high temperatures, which provides the heat storage, and then later on you get that heat out of those materials so that you can use that heat. And what sectors are impacted by thermal energy storage? Many sectors. Uh, our objective has been mainly for uh, concentrating solar power. Yeah. That is uh, where you convert sunlight to very high temperature heat and then you uh, convert it to steam and then steam runs the turbines. And in the process, you would like to store that energy in thermal energy storage. Yeah. Where do you see the solar energy industry moving in the next 10, 20 years? Right now, solar energy industry is uh, uh, increasing at a very rapid rate. In fact, uh, the rate of increase globally is more than 30% overall. Yeah. Uh, photovoltaic industry is increasing at the rate of more than 50% per year. So that's tremendous growth. However, it's starting from a very low base. Yeah. And therefore, uh, this rate of increase needs to continue for a long time for solar energy to become a significant part of our grid, which I expect that it will be. Uh, what sort of um, uh, skills, technical skills, do early career engineers need, would need to acquire in order to be able to put forward solutions in this area? The field is multidisciplinary, yeah. and it needs engineers with various backgrounds, including mechanical and electrical uh, and all of the other backgrounds. Students need to have basic engineering background, which is really physics, science, and math. After that, they can get into a solar energy course where we talk about fundamentals of uh, solar energy availability and how we convert that to different energy needs. Then we also teach a course on solar power plant design. Wow. Uh, and, and after these courses, these students, uh, in my view, are in high demand because the industry is moving in that, direction, in that direction and they don't find many trained engineers with this background. One of your, your focuses is, is, is on photocatalytic detoxification. What, what is that? Well, th this is uh, a new application of solar energy, which is an environmental application. Yeah. Okay? And, and in this, we use sunlight to actually clean up contaminated uh, wastewater, uh, industrial wastewater, uh, contaminated groundwater, and in fact, we can clean up contaminated air also. You hold quite a few patents. What makes a patent successful? Well, uh, if a patent uh, solves an actual need and is, can be converted to uh, practical devices, then that patent can become successful. When a person sees a certain need, and uh, says, okay, I, I can maybe find a solution for that need. That's when inventions and innovations occur. Innovations occur where you allow people to think freely without constraints and, and you challenge them. And, and where uh, there is uh, uh, discussion among people from various disciplines. Yeah. And when that happens, that's where uh, there's some innovation, one discipline that can help another discipline. What drives you to want to invent, to innovate new technologies, to provide solutions to some mm. of these challenges? Well, uh, in my case, uh, I look around and I see what are the needs of the people and do I have background in some area that can help those people? And they could be people around me, they could be people away from me. In one case, for example, this photocatalytic air disinfection, the need was my son, who right. is asthmatic from birth, 
And so, so I saw and, and, I, and I thought about as to what I can do to help him. And so the photocatalytic solar technology that I was working on, I felt that I could use that for cleanup of indoor air, which would help him. Yeah. And, and in fact, then I found out later on that it was helping a lot more people. Professor Goswami, I just want to thank you so much for sharing your insight, your knowledge and on the direction and the future for solar energy. And I want to wish you all the best with the work that you're doing. Thank you, and, and it's a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you very much.